Let's go! Fantasy football sackos week two. Waiver wire. I can't believe we're actually into the waiver wire episodes now. It's like the whole season just flashed by, or the off season flashed by, and now I'm just back to business as usual, beating you in fantasy football, and now we got waiver wires. So yeah, it's it's time to talk fab. We we don't usually talk mm. uh, o- order of of waivers, but it's generally pretty obvious based on the fab that we suggest on spending. Uh, yeah. So there's a couple guy, a couple guys that got hurt. Najee Harris, it looks like escaped injury uh, and is expected to play this week. Unfortunately, Elijah Mitchell did not escape injury. No, uh, neither did. So he's going to be out approximately two months, and so yeah. is Dak Prescott. See ya. Uh, So here we are. It's waiver time. There's always injuries and this is where you can win your leagues. Yeah. So we're going to spend, you know, 10, 15 minutes just talking and talking through the the hottest waiver wire ads week two. Um, I I think that you're right. We should probably start with some of these injured guys. Um, You mentioned Najee Harris allegedly should be back. They were pretty scared about his uh, foot. Um, But Evidently, most things say okay and that he should be back for week two. Are you going to go out and try to land Jalen Warren at all? He's only no, rostered I, in 1% of ESPN leagues. No, I, I again, still don't like the Pittsburgh offense. That was a thing in the offseason. That's why we didn't really have a lot of Najee stock. That's why we didn't have Deontay Johnson stock, even though he has a massive target share again. I just don't really want anything to do with this offense when Trubisky is the quarterback because he's not very good. Fair enough. I think their defense is going to keep them into a lot of low scoring games. But yeah, I I agree more or less. All right. Then uh, moving on from Najee to Elijah Mitchell will be out for approximately two months. Are you running to the waiver wire to spend some fab on Jeff Wilson Jr.? Tough, right? I don't know what your thoughts are because we haven't talked about this beforehand. We we like to kind of kind of flesh it out on screen or on pod for you listeners. So I, we were both down on Elijah Mitchell because we didn't like the Trey Lance factor of him rushing and the Debo Samuel rushing factor. Jeff Wilson Jr. Basically took all the carries once Elijah Mitchell was out of the game, other than when Debo or Trey Lance were running the ball. I just don't think there's going to be a ton of touchdown opportunities here because they're going to have the other guys running in. So from a fab perspective, this is like a dollar or two. I wouldn't go spend more on it because I just don't think that there's that high of a ceiling. And I mean, if you have like cam acres or something and you're like, Oh God, I'm freaking out that I mean, a c- couple bucks is probably all, all I would spend. I just wouldn't want to spend more because I don't think the production is going to be there. Jeff Wilson currently rostered in three and a half percent of leagues on ESPN had 22 rushing yards, two catches, eight receiving yards, five fantasy points. Um, Terrible weather. Absolutely awful weather. Um, Upcoming schedule. I'll just read you the next two months worth of games. You have the Mm. Seahawks, Broncos, Rams, Panthers, Falcons, Chiefs, Rams, Chargers, Niners, uh, playing the Cardinals and then the Saints. So yeah, middle middling, right? Like there, there might be some opportunities for some good games in there. But again, I, I if you were to tell me Jimmy G was going to be the quarterback, I'd probably like Jeff Wilson Jr. more. But how because sad is it not, that I was I was just having the same thought? Like, yeah, there is nothing about Trey Lance that remotely impressed me in that bears game. I mean, they forced him or tried to force him to play quarterback and he didn't do so well playing quarterback. Yeah. They, I, I believe I read something that they blitzed him zero times. Literally they do. They came at him with the front four the entire day yeah. uh, and were able to get home. I just, it, it, I, their offense will be better than that. It was bad weather as the first week. There, yeah. There's a lot of stuff going on. It, it will get better. Uh, especially if you're a Niners fan, but from a fantasy perspective, I would, hey, I get the couple bucks. Uh, if you want to spend it on him, I wouldn't go crazy only because he might <laughs> clog up somebody else's roster. Uh, I'd probably let somebody else take him. Then uh, then you spend anything. Zero ad, sure. A uh, couple bucks at the most. 
Yeah, yeah, would not be a confident start. Uh, what about Khalil Herbert, rostered in about a quarter of leagues, a quarter of ESPN leagues? Uh, the second back in the Bears offense had nine carries for 45 yards and a score, just over 11 fantasy points on the day, even with the crap weather. Um, do you think he's viable? Uh, I think he should be added uh, because he'll he'll clearly be the guy if Montgomery gets hurt. I don't think he's going to get enough snaps uh, to be playable on a weekly basis. So, yes, he had that he had that touchdown, right? Like that's great, but I don't like expect that to be no, like he was kind of subbing in for Montgomery when he scored because it was the first possession of the fourth quarter. That's generally when a lot of uh, running backs get spelled. That's when he scored his touchdown. It's pretty clearly Montgomery's job here. Um, so I, I I would not spend any money uh, to to get Herbert if he's available. Uh, zero ad at the most. Yeah, I will not add Herbert in any league. I don't think he's personally like startable. I think he's pretty much just a roster bomb that's going to sit on your bench that you're going to hate starting if you ever have to. Uh, I think a better ad is actually probably Jamal Williams, uh, who's rostered in about a third of leagues. He had 28 rushing yards, a catch, two receiving yards, did score twice, 16 fantasy points. They're not scared of using him in the red zone. Uh, he you know, generally works behind DeAndre Swift, uh, who does get the most carries. Um, but, you know, Jamal Williams, uh, trusted by Detroit around the goal line. He had two one-yard touchdowns. So, Yeah, I, I mean, DeAndre Swift was on the field for 67% of snaps. He ran 66% of the routes that they ran, got 100% of the long down uh, distance. Um, I, it just happenstance that Williams uh, scored the touchdowns. Now, if you're going to guarantee me he's going to be the goal line guy, okay, that's fine. Um but he's going to have to score a touchdown to give you literally any <laughs> any significant value on a weekly basis. And that's hard to predict, especially for the Lions. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> speaking about uh, hard to predict touchdown percentages, please don't tell me you're going to rush out and add Rex Burkhead. Uh, can I tell you I do want to add Rex Burkhead this Come week? On. No, no, <clears throat> no, he's well, no. So... Here I'm going to tell you why. So he played 71% of the snaps. Don't care. Uh, and that, the, you know, like a the best game script possible, right? Damian Pierce, sh it should have been his show. He was literally on the field for the other 29% of the snaps. Rex Burke had 51% of the rushing attempts, ran 67% of total routes, 19% of total targets on the team. That's like running back two usage. Um, and he's only rostered in 17% of leagues. Uh, I don't think you have to spend more than a dollar or two to get him. And you are looking at a flex worthy running back um, in, in this offense. He, he's the running back that I would prefer to own for the next month and a half or two as rookie Damian Pierce gets up to speed. Okay. That is, that is maybe the only scenario where Rex Burkhead is viable. It's like you drafted Damian Pierce. You're freaking out because they didn't really use him. Or you had Elijah Mitchell and he got hurt. And so you're like scrambling. Oh, my God. I need somebody for like the next two to three weeks. Okay, Rex Burkhead. But I really think it's Damian Pierce's gig eventually. So, yeah, <sighs> probably. Not about it there. I mean, so like as an example, you went and drafted Kadarius Tony because ESPN or Yahoo told you you should draft Kadarius Tony. He's <laughs> rostered in in eighty two percent of leagues. If you did or listened to us at all during the off season, we have Kadarius Tony ranked in the top fifty. We didn't have a Giants wide receiver ranked in the top fifty, quite frankly, because none of them finished in the top fifty last year. Uh, Kadarius Tony played twelve percent of snaps for the Giants on Sunday. He's rostered in eighty-two percent of leagues. That would be somebody that I would be willing to drop to pick up Rex Burkett. Okay, yeah. I mean, I would also drop a second tight end or a second quarterback. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, yeah, of, correct. I, I agree with all of that. Uh, that so, yeah, that, Rex Burkett is great. That's all I have at running back. Is there anybody else I missed? Yeah, Daryl Henderson, right? Oh. 
We okay, got to yes. talk about Daryl Henderson. So Cam Akers, uh, the the shining star of Cam Akers, uh, did nothing on Thursday. He literally had zero no. points, I think. Three, three carries. I think he played like 12% of snaps or something like that. Right. We talked during the off season of, hey, uh, the Vikings, maybe they'll feature Madison a little bit more. And then Jason runs through the snap counts of every Rams player last year. And basically whoever the starter was in that offense is going to have 80% of the, of the snaps at every given week. Well, week one starter, Daryl Henderson Jr. He looked good. And... Uh, after the game, McVay made mention that Cam Akers needs to make more of his opportunities. Um, maybe this will change going forward. Maybe Cam Akers isn't healthy, but it was all Daryl Henderson week one for the Rams uh, in in kind of a, a, a crappy game for their offense. Daryl Henderson at 13 carries for 47 yards. He gained. Uh, what was it? It's in here. I think... 18 yards on a single carry, uh, leaving 29 yards on 12 carries uh, or two less than two and a half yards per carry on the other 12 carries. So super inefficient, did have five catches for 26 yards. Um, just a freaking incredible, incredible Bills defense, though. So but honestly, no, you can't you have to. You have to recognize the usage there. Daryl Henderson, in my mind, is the number one running back ad in every single league this week. Yeah, and I, I think that you could probably justify up to 10%, maybe 15% of your fab if you're really hurting a running back and don't have one for 15% some reason. 15% if you're the Acres manager, right? Uh, maybe, yeah, just to have both. Because you got them in the third know, or fourth. Like, hope one, you did. Or while we were drafting and I took him in the seventh because he wasn't playing. Uh, I drafted like him draft. in the tenth. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I think you can go up to 15% comfortably. I think he's the number one waiver ad clearly this week uh, and should be um, targeted if you are active on the waiver wire. All right. Off to receiver land. Jahan Dotson, three catches, off 40 yards. Off to wide receiver land. John Dotson, three catches, 40 yards, two scores. We're not chasing points, are we? Uh, no, but... Curtis Samuel, all, eight catches, 55 yards, and a score, 19.2 fantasy points. You like that more? He also had a couple I of runs. I don't had know a couple what runs. I... I don't know what I like in this offense. Oh, uh, it's Curtis Samuel. It has to be. Probably, but all those wide receivers, I believe, played over 90% uh, or ran 90% of the routes. They were in a lot of three wide receiver sets, which is yeah. good uh, for those wide receivers. So, um, yeah, I I think that's a fun, fun little offense that could be kicking or cooking uh, up in Washington uh, for the, the commanders. All right. Um, I, I, I just I, I don't think you need to spend any money on any of those guys. I or, agree. I, or I or I wouldn't. Isaiah McKenzie, two catches, nineteen receiving yards, a score, ten fantasy points, third wide receiver in the Bills offense. I think it's a zero or one dollar bid. Yeah, I I'm more conservative when it comes to early spending uh, yeah. because I'd rather have more uh, for guys at the at the end of of the season when a catastrophic injury could happen and people are out of fab so yeah i'm I, getting more I conservative like, yeah because you're talking to me um also you're way left leaning right so i <laughs> politics um so i think that um I think it makes a ton of sense to be very conservative with your fab the, at the beginning of the season because you want it to go after a big guy later. Um, and and we, we've talked about save your sauce um, so you can go for the big dip at some point. Um, I, I like doing that uh, when it comes to go. our fab. So so spend spend the zero. Um, and if somebody else gets them, they're probably going to drop them anyway because most of these players aren't that that good. Devin Duvernay. Four he catches, didn't play 54 enough. yards, two scores, 20 fantasy points. Doesn't matter. Nah, he he wasn't on the field enough. All like, right, not on the field enough. What about what about Tyler Boyd? Rostered in 70% of leagues. So with the T. Higgins injury, should he be rostered more? 
Uh, mm, sure. He, he, I mean, he was a, he was a wide receiver too, a couple of years ago before they, they brought chase in, uh, when it was Higgins and Boyd, I believe. Right. So yeah, I, I think he's a, I, again, I think it's a zero ad. Yeah. Um, All right. Then what about Robbie Anderson? Rostered in 38% of leagues, five catches, just over 100 yards, and a score. Obviously, he has dealt with nothing but mediocre quarterback after mediocre quarterback. Now his bigger Mayfield, 100-plus yards and a touch against the Browns, which is a good defense. Um, yeah, caught, <laughs> caught the one long touchdown from Baker. Uh, just back to Devin DuVernay real quick. He only uh, ran 51% of their total routes, uh, had a 14% target share on the day. Um, that that's not enough for me to go out and spend anything, uh, on what I think is a wide receiver two in that offense, uh, behind Bateman. And we're not really sure what that offense is going to look like, especially once Dobbins comes back. So, uh, just, just a quick, quick note on, on Duvernay, uh, when it comes to Robbie Anderson, he, he had over a hundred targets last year and nobody really talked about that, uh, during the off season. Uh, where he wasn't getting drafted and you target targets, right? So um, I, I do think that there is some potential upside for Robbie Anderson uh, with Baker slinging the ball around. And he's yeah. always been, he's always kind of been in that Deshaun Jackson mold where he'll hit the big, he'll hit the big shot. And um, if, if you're going to give me a hundred targets this year, I think it's a fun speculative ad for nothing. All right, my last receiver, DeAndre Carter, uh, wide receiver for the Chargers. You had Keenan Allen go out. He had three catches, 64 yards, and a score, 15 fantasy points. Um, left Keenan Allen left with a, ham, with a hamstring injury. Yeah. Are you sucks. speculatively adding DeAndre Carter? Yeah, I mean, he looked pretty good. Uh, and I, I mean, he only had the four targets, but but three for 64 and a touch. Um, it, it seems like I haven't really read anything on Keenan Allen, but I, I would assume he's definitely not playing on Thursday because with the hamstring injury against the Chiefs. Um, so if, if you're in a pinch, uh, I think this is a, a potential zero bid. Um, and, you know, he was he's a former Washington guy. He hasn't really done all that much. Um but with, uh, I mean, it's one of the better offenses in football. So if, you, if you're going to give me their wide receiver two for a couple of weeks, I can roll with that. All right. Uh, I lied. I have one more receiver. Obviously, Godwin started, had the hammy pull. Um, but Julio Jones was pretty serviceable, yeah. finished with more than 10 points. Um, Julio Jones rostered in 43% of the league. Should he be a priority add? I mean, he looked pretty good. He, he had, I mean, he seemed like he was Brady's Five favorite targets, deep three target. Catches, 69 yards. Nice. Couple, couple carries too. Um, so I, I think that um, he, he didn't look like Julio Jones from last year. No, Let's just put it I that will. way. He, Never will. Well, hopefully. So I, I think that, uh, that he is a fine ad. I, I would not spend any money on him, but with Godwin out for the next couple of weeks, um, I wouldn't be surprised to see him score a touchdown against New Orleans this week. And it's especially end, with Evans being locked down by Lattimore on the other side, yeah, it, it okay. sets up to be a it sets up to be a nice Julio week. And on the other side, we have OJ Howard, two catches, two touchdowns. Anything there? Any smoke or any fire where there's smoke? No. Absolutely no, not. Stay he, away from the Houston <laughs> Texans tight end. Yeah, I, he wasn't on the field enough to to justify it. So uh, you got to look at snap percentages. He was not on the field enough to justify it. And lastly, I have a streaming defense for you. The Cleveland Browns. One interception, four sacks, 24 points against. Put up eight fantasy points, but this week, and that was against the Panthers. This week, this coming week, they have the Jets who made or managed three points through the first 59 minutes of action against the Ravens. 
high scoring. Yeah. Uh, since you're since you're talking defense, I get to talk kicker. Uh, Greg <laughs> Joseph, uh, the kicker for the Vikings, is owned in only 44 percent of leagues. Um, that team's going to move the ball and they're going to score a lot of points. And I think the Packers defense is pretty good. Um, and he, he had a he had a nice little kicking week. Um, so he is somebody. Keep in mind, they play in a dome, so he's going to play half of his games inside in with with no conditions. They also play in Detroit uh, and, and uh, I believe Dallas and, and things like that. So that team is is pretty explosive, and that's a kicker that I'm actually going to be targeting this week uh, in leagues where I don't have Brandon McManus. Uh, or is, I thought you were going to say in leagues where you have Harrison Bucker, who did not have a... There you go. Who's hurt? Yeah. yeah. There you go. And uh, since you brought up kicker, I will also mention Carson Wentz. Four scores, three hundred plus yards. Incredible. Nobody. I did not see that coming. Um, so yeah, there you go. That's some. Yeah. That's some dudes. You should and, add. and famous and famous Jameis too. And why not you get love- famous Jameis? Right. Also, maybe Jarvis Landry. Like there was something there. There was a lot of targets. Yeah. I agree. No, it, it was great. The football was back. It's yeah. really nice to uh, watch. I, I don't know if you have the app on your phone where it tells you how many hours you look at your screen every day. Mm. Uh, but but when football starts, mine goes up a solid several hours uh, yeah. just because of just because of how much I'm on it for Sunday and Monday and Thursday uh, football <laughs> feels good for it to be back. Whoa, didn't see you there. You can't sneak up on me like that. I'm sorry, I was just making some trades. How about you hit that subscribe button? I'll show you what it was.